Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Frankenstein's Lab, Stolen Identity, Bad Genes, and a Gay Sperm Donation. <laughs> you're here with the big sig tig and what do we got let's go ahead and dive right in well boom here we go texas gender clinic dubbed frankenstein's lab performs hundreds of experimental surgeries each year including giving patients a penis and vagina and barbie dolling clients by removing both all right so this story does contain graphic images so uh go ahead and cover your eyes if you're uh, afraid a general clinic in Texas dubbed Frank's Frankenstein's Lab has performed hundreds of unconventional genital surgeries that many experts describe as dangerous. The Crane Center for Transgender Surgery in Austin bills itself as a world leader in operations for non-binary people, those who don't identify exclusively with one gender. The surgeries include giving patients a penis and a vagina, the venus, uh, I dubbed it there last week, or completely removing their sex organs, essentially Barbie dolling your genitals, one critic put it. The center's director, Dr. Curtis Crane, has previously bragged he couldn't think of a surgical request that I haven't been able to fulfill. Prices for the procedures range from $10,000 to $70,000 depending on the complexity. LGBTQ groups say the operations benefits patients' mental health, while opponents say it shows how far off the rails gender-affirming treatment has gone. And there is an image of the doctor and one of his patients. Um... Uh, Again, with his hair and his pride flag and his pride shirt. Very, uh, very prideful. Jay Richards, a fellow at the Heritage Foundation, a conservative think tank, told DailyMail.com, It's tempting to compare clinics engaged in these ghoulish procedures to Frankenstein's lab, but that would be uncharitable to Dr. Frankenstein. He added non-binary and nullification surgeries reveal the sheer madness of gender ideology. It started with surgeries to make males look like females and vice versa, but it doesn't end there because the ideology's definition of gender identity is completely untethered from our sexed bodies. It reduces the human person to mere internal sense of gender, which has no limiting principle, and so can mean anything. Experts describe the newer non-binary procedures as ex experimental because there is limited research on the long-term outcomes and there's no consensus for the surgical techniques used. While this is not the only clinic that performs these surgeries in the U.S., Dr. Crane said his practice, which also has locations in San Francisco and Boulder, Colorado, is the leader in the field. Dr. Crane, who has been dubbed a crazy butcher by critics on Twitter, claims he is one of the only practitioners in the world who is both a plastic surgeon and urologist, uh, who has also done fellowship in transgender surgery and reconstructive urology. There he is with his female nurse. However, the surgeon and his clinic have been on the receiving end of at least eight lawsuits from 2017-2019 in California. While all the suits have been dismissed, former patients allege the doctor and his team performed incorrect and unnecessary surgeries, ignored suspected infections and surgical complications that caused debilitating pain and hospitalization, and lied about his success and complication rates. The email has reached out to Crane Center for comment, but has not received a response. According to the website, the clinic, which has nearly a dozen practitioners across its sites, has performed more than 1,000 phalloplasties, which involve crafting a penis, since 2012. Its doctors perform more than 200 top surgeries, which involve adding or removing breasts, and 150 vaginoplasties, the crafting of a vagina per year. Dr. Crane said in 2020 Facebook Live, We offer everything you can think of. I opened this practice eight years ago. I've seen thousands of patients from LGBTQ community. I can't think of a time that a patient has come up with a surgical request that I haven't been able to fulfill. I really can come up with any reasonable surgery that a patient asks for. Okay, and here's an image there of what they do to create the... Uh, the the penis the fake penis uh yeah just absolutely horrible uh a vaginal preserving phalloplasty is the opposite it constructs a penis for the person without surgically removing their vagina um in people who have either these surgeries the vaginal opening is located just underneath the base of the penis shaft exact numbers of preserving procedures performed are not known though dr crane did say he has performed hundreds and has had more than 2,000 patients for various gender affirming surgeries since he took over the clinic, which had only done top surgeries under the founder who has since retired. Still, O'Malley, director of GenSpec, a 
campaign group told Daily Mail, surgical interventions for non-binary identities are not necessary and arguably cause more harm than good. Extreme body modifications such as nullification should not be carried out merely because the patient wants it. And there it is. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you're 18 plus, you can go decide whatever you want to do, but the fact that you're allowed to offer that service, I don't know. I don't know where we are, people. This ain't planet Earth that I grew up on. Puberty blockers may not be reversible and could raise children's risk of fertility problems and even cancer, Mayo Clinic studies suggest. All right, let's dive in. Mayo Clinic experts say puberty blockers can lead to withering testicles, fertility problems, and even cancer among the trans kids who take them in the latest study to raise alarms about transgender medicine. They ban this stuff in the UK. It's coming. They're going to ban it over here too because eventually, like in the next five to 10 years, they're going to realize, well, at least in 20, when all these kids grow up and, and decide that they made a major mistake and they want to reverse it because they were told, hey, it's totally reversible. <laughs> Just give us that cash and let's slice and dice. The findings cast out on the reversibility of puberty blockers, a key claim of the trans activists who promote the drugs, saying they only pause puberty and buy time for trans kids to make decisions about their gender. gender, Identity. Whatever. Instead, researchers say puberty blockers hurt the development of testicles and sperm production in ways that are not fully reversible and could affect users' ability to have children when they grow up. Absolutely. Uh, at the tissue level, we report mild to severe sex gland atrophy, in puberty blocker treated children, the geneticist Nagar Rajan Kanan and others wrote in a 33 page study. There's some uh, chronic BP exposure, puberty blockers. You can see the sperm just totally just being annihilated. Trans medicine saves lives. We provide unprecedented historical evidence revealing detrimental pediatric testicular sex gland responses to the drugs. The study has not yet been peer-reviewed, but it has been endorsed by Jen Speck, a global advocacy group against medical transitions, Harry Potter, author J.K. Rowling, Benjamin Ryan, and other prominent science writers and others. It takes aim at one of the most controversial issues of our time, whether to provide drugs and surgery to kids who experience gender confusion or dysphoria and ask their parents and doctors for help. Puberty blocks were originally developed to suppress hormones of minors who started puberty too early. Uh, they are nowadays prescribed off-label to fast-growing number of trans children, and they're also used to castrate pedophiles or and rapists and things like that, chemically. All right, uh, yeah, so there it is. The surging number of puberty blockers, 2017, 633, and it's uh, over doubled in 2021. Go ahead and get your injection. Republican lawmakers have outlawed puberty blockers and other types of trans care for minors in early two dozen states. Nearly two dozen, sorry. Norway, Finland, Sweden, Holland, and the UK are among growing list of European countries to have restricted or wholesale stopped trans interventions on children. Whistleblowers have been saying this for ages. Puberty blockers are not a pause button. Jen Speck posted about the research. Yeah, we all know this. When you introduce something into the body uh, that changes it and you continue introducing it, then guess what? There's one study about a guy who wanted to just block his nose, Okay just to see what would happen. And no one would fund it because they thought it would be too crazy. It would probably affect him so badly that no one would fund it. So he said, okay, I'm just gonna do it myself. So he basically plugged up uh, his nostrils and uh, mouth breathed. And uh, just after, I think it was a week, his nose cavity began to grow over. Okay, so mouth breathers, people who breathe through the mouth all day long, they end up with an elongated face. Okay? Now, you can reverse those things, but it's not just a lickety-split thing. You have to train your face and muscles and bone structure back into that. So, yeah, small changes can have big effects. Doctor amputates man's healthy fingers to relieve body integrity dysphoria in Quebec. Well, welcome to uh, Justin Trudeau's trailer park uh, uh, circus where everything is going wild up here. The amputation enabled him to live in alignment with his perceived identity. And there you have it, just... Uh, a line out of uh, a science fiction novel. A Quebec man who felt that he should not have fourth and fifth fingers on his left hand ha successfully petitioned a doctor to remove them. So are doctors just allowed to do this stuff? Well, he came to me, and where's the, where's the College of Physicians and Surgeons on this one? Oh, no, 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 it's totally okay to make them feel good. <laughs> must, must affirm people's feelings. A surgeon went ahead and removed the man's healthy fingers in a case of digit amputation believed to be the first of its kind to relieve so-called integrity dysphoria the ambidextrous 20 year old man had apparently tried therapy and pharmaceutical drugs to relieve the feeling that he had two fingers that should not be there but the national post reports that this only increased his distress yeah and they talk about that that if you take someone who's like mildly mentally unhealthy and you put them in therapy and continue talking about it over and over week after week after week it actually is a detriment to them they should forget about it, move on and get over, not dig deep and peel back the onion till there's nothing left. And then just tears 
in tears and tears and there's nothing no onion left so let's just talk about how we peeled the onion apart and let's talk about the tears again every week keep giving me those dollar bills every week so i can help you in the journal clinical case reports dr nadia nadeau of the department of psychiatry uh, at l'université laval in quebec city said of the patient he hides his fingers keeps them flexed leading to impaired dexterity localized pain irritability and anger the national institutes of health defines body integrity identity disorder as the extremely rare phenomenon of a person whose desire desires the amputation of one or more healthy limbs or who desires a paralysis some of these persons mutate themselves mutilate themselves others ask surgeons for an amputation or for the transaction transection of their spinal cord so it all starts with like i want to be paralyzed i don't feel like i should be moving so they just go ahead and try to paralyze themselves it doesn't work so the doctor will go, snip that spinal cord and then they're relegated to a wheelchair in their pure joy and contentment now he completed asking a friend to watch over him and be prepared to call emergency service in case he attempted uh, lead to resuscitation. The man's nightmares and emotional distress allegedly ceased upon the removal of his two fingers, and after the surgical pain dissipated, he did not experience phantom pain. The case study read that without his healthy fingers, he was able to pursue the life he envisioned as a complete human being without those two fingers bothering him. Presence of trans athlete on CT, high school girls track and field team, prompts questions to district about discrimination. Okay. Old Saybrook High School. What do we have? The Old Saybrook High School track and field team has been in the spotlight ever since an article published last month in the local newspaper started circulating on the internet. The article featured a picture of the girls track and field team, which revealed the presence of a transgender student on the team. As you can see, uh, many females. And then we have, uh, I'm assuming this giant human compared to the females is the transgender female we're quickly spread about the issues that had existed inside the girls locker room as a result girls who identify as biological girls and who were born female felt unsafe with the presence of an athlete who was born a male inside the same locker room especially considering the size differential the biological girls were forced to huddle in a corner of the locker room so they could change clothes while at least a modicum of privacy uh hoping to remain out of view of the student who was born of biological boy Biological girls in the situation often experience psychological issues, feelings of embarrassment, and even feel fearful about joining a team in the first place, especially knowing that a biological boy may be watching them change in the locker room. Bottom line, the biological girls no longer felt safe in their own space. So, for one person's feeling, we're going to go ahead and make 12 feel super uncomfortable. And there you go. There you have the liberal ideology, the logic of these people. Oh, well, we can't hurt that person's feelings. Well, what about them? Well, they're women. They're, they're okay with who they are. Well, they're not okay with some giant dude creeping them out who obviously has mental disorders. Okay? Obviously. Like, stop it. The Centennial reached out to the district in order to understand if the situation is still happening, what accommodations have been offered to the biological girls who should be entitled to the exact same privileges extended to other students, including ensuring they have their own safe space where their needs as biological girls can be fully affirmed and met. The biological girls should not be forced into an environment that feels unfriendly or hostile, nor should they be discriminated against for wanting, as a protected class themselves, to have their own safe space. Of course, they have not heard back, because they don't know what to do. They get confronted with something, and immediately they just try to solve it by giving whatever the person's asking for. It's like, you know, if someone's like yelling and freaking out, they're just like, okay, okay, just give that person what they want, so they'll be quiet and everything will go back to normal, okay? Please, thank you. <laughs> I mean, I was at a store once, and they had these uh, machines, right, that uh, you can put your cash in and check out. There's no need for a human, okay? So I did it, and I put my cash in. It's a $50 bill, and it ate the money and gave me nothing back. So I told the lady, I was like, hey, I'm waiting for my change. And she was like, oh, that's happened before. So she took it out and tried to fix it. And I was like, just take the money out and give it to me, and you deal with it. I've got things to do. Let's go. And she got all flustered, and I didn't raise my voice. I was just assertive, being like, just give me my money so I can leave. She was like, you're going to have to leave the store, sir. I was like, what? It's like, I'm not leaving until you give me my money. She was like, you're going to have to leave the store, sir. I'm feeling very uncomfortable. I was like, where's your manager? She was like, I'm the manager. And I was like, well, give me my money and call head office later and say you had a problem with the machine, and that's it. I'm not leaving without my money. Transaction complete. Anyway... So this is the people we're dealing with. You know what I mean? Like, they, they cannot deal with confrontation at all. How did that person get hired into a managerial position? I don't know. Migrant influencer Leonel uh, Moreno, our good buddy, uh, apparently is behind bars and he's whinging and whining that he's uh, being persecuted for being a scumbag trying to tell people to squat in your house. Crimea River. 
Rio Grande River. Awesome. The jailed Venezuelan migrant influencer who viciously mocked America to his 500,000 TikTok followers and urged border crossers to invade abandoned houses now misses the glorious liberties he enjoyed in the U.S. Whining to the Post this week, I miss my freedom. I came here to the United States because of persecution in my country, but they're doing the same to me in the United States, persecuting me, Moreno27 wailed. It's all misinformation in the media about me. They're defaming me. They're misrepresenting me in the news. I'm a good father, a good husband, a good son, a good person. Humble, respectful to the person who respect me. Continue Moreno, who spoke only in Spanish and hid his face from the video camera's view during the duration of the video. I miss my entire life. I miss my freedom. With Moreno out on the frame, the camera showed inmates in blue striped jumpsuits sitting at the five. What is happening? I'm afraid they're going to kill me. They're coming for my life. Anyone! So uh, this dude is just a total uh, liberal, clearly. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme give what I want, and when you receive what you get, oh my gosh, how could you do this to me? Good lord. I mean, the dude, uh, it was a, uh, was it, a, instead of being detained, they could have been, uh, had a bracelet, and he didn't check in, so he got arrested. He broke the law. You got arrested, and now you're being persecuted because you're a scumbag, and you're trying to take things that don't belong to you. Get out of here. Get deported. But guess what happens when you get deported in Biden's America? There's an illegal migrant deported eight times with 11 arrests, now charged with murder in Ohio. Our border is broken. This is the literal definition of a broken border. When you kick people out, and they can just walk on through, commit crimes, get released on no bail, commit more crimes, not get deported... Thank you, Mayorkas. Thank you, Joe Biden. Unbelievable. Let's have a quick look at this. An illegal Mexican immigrant who has been deported at least eight times, according to Ohio's Butler County Sheriff's Office, and arrested nearly a dozen times, is now facing murder charges following discovery of a man's body in Ohio. Furman Garcia Gutierrez, 46, is being held at the Butler County Jail on charges of aggravated murder, premeditated, using weapons while intoxicated, carrying concealed weapons, possession of drugs, and obstructing official business. Officers found the victim's body at the uh, 1100 block of of South 13th Street in Hamilton just after 2.30 p.m. Monday in response to a 911 call. Hamilton is just north of Cincinnati. Okay, uh, Gutierrez's first arrest was back in 2001, and he's used at least seven different names and three different birth dates, Butler County Sheriff Richard Jones said during a Wednesday press conference. Gutierrez has been charged with over 20 crimes in that period and is also a gang member. The person would be alive today. Okay, yeah, so if they uh, had detained him, jailed on an ICE Immigration and Customs Enforcement detainer, it was previously said, the person would be alive today, and if you don't think that's uh, affecting you in Butler County, Ohio, we're all border states, we're all border counties. It's here, and we could go on and on. Who knows how many people this guy has been involved in and has killed here in the United States. In our jail, he is two or three weapons charges of domestic violence, driving while intoxicated. We don't know how many he's killed in Mexico. But these people deserve to be here because they're seeking asylum. They're just undocumented. Anyway, let's go ahead and see what happens when you don't get your guacamole and you're a thug. Chaos at Chipotle. A customer shoots an employee. It was loud, and then we all just ran out because it was, yeah. I mean, wouldn't expect to, uh, I wasn't really thinking about there was going to be a shot, but... Was. It happened shortly before 7 o'clock Friday night at the Chipotle on Evergreen in Southfield. Witnesses say it all started out as an argument over food. The source close to the investigation says it was specifically over guacamole. I was just eating a bowl and I heard shouting. And then I look over, they're arguing. The One of the workers went to the back. I don't know why. And then when he was in the back, the customer walked around the counter, tried to grab his food and put it in a bag. Um, and then the employee came back, and they started fighting, and then we heard a gunshot and just ran out as quick as we could. The employee, a 21-year-old man, shot in the leg but expected to survive. There you go. Thank the Lord he aimed low and did, didn't get the femoral artery. Good Lord. We talked about uh, uh, in the past, a group of teens were at Whack Arnold's getting some nuggets and fries and uh, had an argument over um, sweet and sour sauce. And the missus just give her the old shank gut and murdered her. So what are they what are they doing? What's wrong with these people? Okay, what's wrong with people who uh, feel the need to attack over uh, sauce and condiments? Well, guess what? 
Uh, today's the solar eclipse, people. If you're in the line, then good for you. Six inmates reach settlement with New York State, allowing them to watch the total solar eclipse. <laughs> okay, so inmates are allowed to do whatever they want. Like, I, wh why is everyone so soft? Is it the liberal uh, democratic governments that are allowing everyone to just have what they want? Like these helmet kids that grew up and are now politicians? Six inmates who sued New York Correction Department over its decision to lock down prisons during next Monday's total solar eclipse will get to watch the celestial event after all. Lawyers for the six-man incarcerated at Woodburn Correctional Facility in upstate New York Thursday said they've reached a settlement with the state that allowed them in accordance with their sincerely held religious belief. Okay? Federal lawsuit uh, was filed last week arguing April 8th lockdown violates inmates' constitutional rights to practice their faiths by preventing them from taking part in religiously significant event. The six men include a Baptist... Christian, a Muslim, Islamic, Seventh-day Adventist, Christian, two practitioners of Santeria, which is like voodoo, and an atheist. So I don't know anything in any of those religions that talk about having to watch um, a solar eclipse. Probably the Santeria would be the only one, because atheism isn't even a religious thing. Thomas Maley, a spokesperson for the Corrections Department, said the department has agreed to permit the six individuals to view the eclipse while plaintiffs have agreed to drop their suit with prejudice. The suit came in the appropriate resolution. Yeah, I mean, why not just let them watch it? Who cares? But at the same time, if it's during lockdown, then too bad. So sad. See in 75 years when the next one comes. Stop giving people things that they don't deserve. These are criminals. They're in jail. They don't deserve any sort of freedoms. Of course, it's not inhumane to say you're sorry you can't witness the sun. But what if they didn't give them the special glasses and then they looked and now they're uh, blind? So that's the corrections institution's problem too, is it? Former Iowa hospital administrator pleads guilty to decades-long theft scheme. Former administrator at the Iowa hospital who assumed a different man's identity for over three decades pled guilty to the identity theft money. Well, big deal. I mean, it happens all the time. Well, the big deal is, um, according to the evidence in the case, Kieran's victim was a co-worker of his at a hot dog cart in Albuquerque in the late 1980s. Kieran's took his identity and completely assumed it for the following three decades. He acquired fake documents, birth certificate, and the victim's name. He was hired as a high-level administrator at the hospital in Iowa City in 2013, the release said. He gave the hospital fake information, including a false I-9 form, social security number, and date of birth. Once hired, he worked remotely from Wisconsin. Uh, from 2016 to 2022, Kieran's took out loans totaling $200,000 from two credit unions in Iowa using the victim's personal information. 2019, the victim, who was a homeless at the time, found that his credit was being used, which had left him with large amounts of debt. To rectify the issue, the victim went to the branch of the National Bank in L.A., saying he didn't want to pay the debt and requesting his accounts be closed. After presenting his real identification, he was asked security questions, which he was unable to answer. The bank then called LAPD. Officer talked with Kieran's by phone, who said he was living in Wisconsin and didn't give anyone in California permission to access his bank accounts. Kieran's then faxed the LAPD fake documents, including uh, resulting in the arrest of the victim on two felony charges. He was held without bail at L.A. County Jail. Over the following months, Kieran's continued to contact LAPD, an L.A. district attorney, on the status of the prosecution while the victim continued to assert that he was not Kieran's, a judge found the victim to be not mentally competent and ordered him to a mental hospital. The victim pleaded no contest in March 2011 to two charges in exchange for time served. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then said, uh, you're not allowed to use your own name. Only use their true name, Matthew Kieran's, from then on. He spent 147 days in a mental hospital. So this is the world we live in, Okay. You can literally fake stuff and hand it in and people will believe you just on face value. No real investigation. Uh, the guy was homeless, so he's completely dismissed. The other guy works at a hospital, so he's totally legit. Unbelievable. So heads up on identity theft, people. Be very, very careful. Hold your life dear to yourself and your identity because there are monsters everywhere. Boom. Now scientists say wearing jeans is bad for the environment. Study reveals wearing a pair of jeans just once is the equivalent to driving a car 4.6 miles. All right, all right. So this is this is the, the tipping point of when people uh, must realize the insanity that's happening here, okay? They might be an essential piece of everyday clothing, but scientists now say that every simple pair of jeans could be bad for the environment. Wearing a pair of fast fashion jeans just once creates 2.5 kilograms of CO2, the equivalent of driving a petrol car 6.4 miles. Oh, my God. Scientists from the Guangdong University of Technology analyzed the life cycle of a pair of Levi's jeans from growing the cotton to their eventual disposal. They found that some jeans worn only seven times, earning them the classification of fast fashion and produced 11 times more CO2 than jeans worn more often. 
seven times. I don't even understand. And these must be rich people who like go out and buy clothes and then have a closet full of it and then say, okay, spring cleaning, and they just get rid of it all. The humble wardrobe staple, a pair of jeans, has a significant impact on the environment. What a joke. To see how fast fashion affects the environment, the researchers analyzed the life cycle of a pair of Levi's 501 jeans from raw cotton to their disposal by incineration. Of course, they're going to burn them because cotton's not biodegradable. Stupid. During the product's lifetime, the researchers discovered that the fast fashion jeans had a carbon footprint of 95 to 99% larger than traditional fashion jeans, which are worn 120 times on average. The biggest difference between the two styles of consumption is that clothes sold for fast fashion are transported faster and are worn less and being thrown out. So yeah, okay. It's all about people who have no respect for things. We live in a disposable world. Nothing lasts forever. It lasts four to five years max. So there it is. Maybe that's the problem. And uh, there was a stellar jobs print there last week. Everyone was like, oh my God, how did you produce so many jobs? Well, guess what? Uh, they were all foreign-born jobs and part-time jobs. It wasn't any new full-time jobs created. Uh, 303 payroll added, which was a four sigma beat to the median estimate of 2014. And this will be revised, 100%. If you look at any of the jobs numbers, you just go back six months and type in your computer, just be like, jobs numbers revision, and you'll see date after date after date of numbers being revised over this. So, boom, there you have a chart just showing uh, the change in non-farm payrolls. And non-farm payrolls, basically payrolls that are non-farm uh, uh, related. The number of part-time jobs soared by 691,000 to 28.63 million, up from 27.941 million, while full-time jobs dropped 6,000. There you have it. No full-time jobs, no real jobs. Antifa battered in the Kulak, their phones seized by nationalists apparently revealing seedy links between media, non-government organizations, and the far left. Well, what the heck's going on here? Earlier today, local protesters uh, against the refugee center in Kulak, Dublin, were confronted by leftist journalists and other Antifa types. Here are the facts, as we understand them, from local first-hand sources in Kulak. We'll be updating the article as more details are established. A small group of men arrived in the afternoon on Saturday, April 6th, to the old Crow Crown Paints factory in Kulak, which is being picketed by locals opposing the plantation of up to 100 asylum seekers there. They arrived to counter protest and take footage. According to the video and our sources, the men were told to leave as they allegedly posed a risk to the women and children at the protest. When they wouldn't move on, they were apprehended by locals, had their flags seized and forced to vacate the area. Some of the protesters dropped their mobile phones unlocked at the scene and along with other belongings such as driver's license, UK identification. The protesters reviewed the content of the phones to delete any invasive content that had been recorded on one phone which seems to belong to a mainstream journal List would appear to show concerning level of cooperation between various media sources, NGO workers, and prominent Antifa operatives in both Ireland and the UK. Our sources explained that this appears to be corroborated by messages on the phone and that the Antifa group had planned to oppose an anti-immigration protest in the city centre. They ultimately went to Kulaks as they thought there would only be women and children there, so they would have a better opportunity to dominate. The videos on the phone's content while he's circling in social media seem the possibility to hold a vast quantity of insider info on the far left in Ireland. The contents are certain to be studied in detail by nationalists. Already, it seems, the phone numbers of maybe a majority of prominent pro-plantation activists have been revealed. This embarrassing physical humiliation for the left, along with the trove of info revealed, is the final nail in the coffin of the street-level leftist organizing in 26 countries. The time for no para passaran has passed. Uh, FDA to drop ban on sperm donations from gay and bisexual men. And uh, it's a little bit concerning because gay and bisexual men are very promiscuous. They have pig parties and uh, all kinds of disgusting things like that. Just type it in. Ask any gay man. Just be like, hey, uh, like, you know, like, do you do you have promiscuous sex, like, uh, with strangers? And m I would say well over 50% say yes, absolutely. Every weekend I have sex with multiple partners, and that's why it's been a problem. Uh, but they're saying it's not a problem anymore because that's prejudice. It's discrimination. The FDA uh, is making plans to significantly expand the number of gay and bisexual men who could donate sperm anonymously. Longstanding agency rules ban anonymous sperm donations by men who acknowledge having sex with other men during the previous five years to reduce the risk of spreading pathogens, including HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. Under a proposal that's drafting, the FDA would eliminate the broad ban and instead adopt more pointed screening questions to assess HIV risks, according to people familiar with the agency's deliberations. They're planning to finalize the proposal by summer. If the White House approves, new guidelines could go into effect by the end of this year. And people also say, like, I'm not saying anything, whatever, I don't know. But uh, they say, you know, being gay is not a choice. You know what I mean? 
it, you're born with it. So if that's the case, is it hereditary? Would a woman want to know that uh, it was gay sperm that was being donated? If she, like, you know, maybe she doesn't want a, a child to be gay, perhaps by her heredity. Uh, if it just happens, it happens, whatever. But, like, you know, if you could choose, wouldn't you want your children to procreate? You want to be a grandma, grandpa, something like that? IVF and assistive reproductive technologies account for some 2% or about 86,000 of infants born in the U.S. each year, according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And there you have it, people. Sigma Tiger, all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. If you have a comment, go ahead, throw it down. Like and subscribe. Sigma Tiger, signing out.